All right, that brings us to the final chapter in Wind in the Willows, The Return of Toad, Part 2. A review for you. How do Rat and Badger react to Toad's return? Do they let bygones be bygones? Has Toad stopped being irresponsible and conceited? Who has taken over Toad Hall? See if you know the answer to those. Some vocabulary today. Deafening. Extremely loud. Expedition. A journey made for a particular purpose. Immense. Tremendous. Very large or great. Modest. Humble. Boastful. The otter says, you think I'm cute? Ah, get otter here. Sentinels, sentries or guards, people who stand watch. All right, today's purpose. It's the last read aloud in The Wind in the Willows. Go ahead and make a prediction in your head. Do you think Mr. Toad will be able to reclaim or take back Toad Hall? And then let's read on and see if your prediction is correct. Here is our story today. Toad was quite alarmed at Badger's serious style of greeting. But the rat whispered to him, never mind, he's always despondent when he's hungry. They waited in silence, and presently there came another knock. The rat, with a nod to Toad, went to the door and ushered in the mole. Hooray, here's old Toad, cried the mole. Why, you must have managed to escape, you clever Toad. The rat, alarmed, pulled him by the elbow, but it was too late. Toad was puffing and swelling already. Clever? Oh, uh, no, Toad said. I'm not really clever, according to my friends. I've only broken out of the strongest prison in England, that's all, and captured a railway train and escaped on it, that's all. Well, well, said the mole, moving toward the supper table. Supposing you talk while I eat, not a bite since breakfast. And he sat down and helped himself to cold beef and pickles. Toad straddled the hearth rug, thrust his paw into his trouser pocket, and pulled out a handful of silver. Look at that, he cried, displaying it. That's not so bad, is it, for a few minutes' work? And how do you think I have done it, Mole? Horse stealing. That's how I done it. Go on, Toad, said the Mole, immensely interested. Oh, Toad, be, do be quiet, please, said the Rat. And don't you egg him on, Mole. Just tell us what the position is, what's to be done, now that Toad is back. Well, the position's about as bad as it can be, replied the Mole. Armed sentinels posted everywhere at Toad Hall. It's a very difficult situation, said the Rat, reflecting deeply. But I think I see what Toad really ought to do. Now nah, he oughtn't, shouted the mole. Well, I shan't do it anyway, cried Toad, getting excited. I'm not going to be ordered about by you fellows. By this time, all three were talking at once at the top of their voices when a thin, dry voice made itself heard, saying, Be quiet. And instantly everyone was silent. It was the badger. Toad, he said crossly, aren't you ashamed of yourself? What do you think your father would have said if he'd been here tonight? Toad, who was on the sofa by this time, began to sob. There, there, went on the badger more kindly. Stop crying. We're going to let bygones be good bygones. But what the mole says is true. There are guards at every point. There's no point in trying to take the place by storm. Well, then it's all over, sobbed the toad, crying into the sofa cushions. I shall join the army. Come, cheer up, toady, said the badger. There are more ways of getting back a place than by taking it by force. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. Toad sat up and dried his eyes. Secrets had an immense attraction for him because he could never keep one. There is an underground passage, said the badger, that leads from the riverbank right up into the middle of Toad Hall. Oh, nonsense, badger, said Toad. I know every inch of Toad Hall. My young friend, said the badger with great severity, your father told me a great deal he would have never dreamt of telling you. He made me promise not to tell you about it unless you really needed to know. The other animals looked hard at Toad to see how he would take it. Toad was inclined to be sulky at first, but soon he brightened up. Well, well, he said. Go on, Badger. How's this passage of yours going to help us? I found out, continued the Badger, that there's going to be a banquet tomorrow night. It's somebody's birthday. And all the weasels will be gathered together in the dining hall. No weapons of any sort. But the sentinels will be posted as usual, remarked the rat. Exactly, said the Badger. That's my point. The weasels will trust entirely to their guards. And that's where the passage comes in. That tunnel leads right up under the butler's pantry next to the dining hall. We'll show, we shall creep out quietly into the butler's pantry, cried the mole. With our pistols and swords and sticks, shouted the rat. And rush in upon them, said the badger. And whack em, whack em and whack em, cried the toad in ecstasy. 
Very well, then, said the badger, resuming his usual dry manner. Our plan is settled. We'll make all the necessary arrangements in the morning. Toad slept at a late hour next morning, and by the time he got down, he found the other animals had already breakfasted. The bowl had slipped off somewhere, and Badger was sitting, reading the paper, and the rat was organizing an enormous pile of weapons. I think the job can be done without the need for weapons, rat, said the Badger presently. Eh, we might as well be on the safe side, said the rat reflectively. The toad, having finished his breakfast, picked up a stick and swung it vigorously about him. I'll learn to steal my house, he cried. Oh, don't say learn em, toad, said the rat. It doesn't sound right. It's not good English. What are you always nagging a toad for, inquired the badger. What's the matter with his English? It's the same as what I use myself. It's good enough for me. It ought to be good enough for you. Oh, I'm very sorry, said the rat humbly. Only I think it ought to be teach em, not learn em. But we don't want to teach em, replied the badger. We want to learn em. And what's more, we're going to do it, too. Ah, very well. Have it your way, said the rat. Presently, the mole returned, and the four companions continued to make plans to recapture Toad Hall. When it began to grow dark, the rat summoned them back into the parlor to prepare for the coming expedition. When all was ready, the badger took a dark lantern in one paw, grasped the stick with the other, and said, Now then, follow me. Mole first, because I'm very pleased with him. Rat next. Toad last. The toad was so anxious not to be left out that he did not protest one bit. With Badger leading the way, they soon found themselves in the secret passage. It was cold and dark, and Toad began to shiver. The lantern was far ahead, and he could not help lagging behind. Then, fearful of being left alone in the dark, Toad hurried forward and bumped into Rat. The Badger thought they were being attacked and drew a pistol. He was on the point of putting a bullet into Toad when he discovered what had really happened. He was very angry and said, Now this time that tiresome Toad shall be left behind. But Toad whimpered, and the other two promised to look out for him. And at last, the procession moved on. They shuffled along till at last the badger said, We ought by now to be nearly under the hall. They suddenly heard a confused murmur of sound as if people were cheering. The passage now began to slope upwards, and then the noise broke out again very close above them. Hooray! 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 They heard, and the stamping of little feet. Oh, what a time they are having up there, said the badger. Come on. They hurried along the passage till it came to an end. There they found themselves standing under the trap door that led up into the butler's pantry. Such a tremendous noise was going on in the banqueting hall that there was little danger of them being overheard. The badger said, Now, all together. And the four of them put their shoulders to the trap door and heaved it back. Hoisting each other up, they found themselves standing in the pantry. The noise they heard as they emerged from the passage was deafening. At last, as the cheering and hammering subsided, a voice could be heard to say, well, I should like to say one more word about our kind host, Mr. Toad. We all know Toad. Great laughter in the background. Modest Toad. Oh, let me at him, muttered Toad. Hold on a minute, said the badger, restraining him with difficulty. Get ready, all of you. The badger drew himself up, took a firm grip of his stick, glanced around at his comrades, and cried, The hour has come! Follow me! And flung open the door wide. My, what a squealing and screeching filled the air. Well might the terrified weasel dive under the tables. Well might the ferrets rush wildly for the fireplace and the chimney therein. Well might the tables and chairs be upset when the four heroes strode into the room. They were but four in all, but to the panic-stricken weasels. And before long the stoats, Toad Hall seemed full of monstrous animals, and they broke and fled with squeals of terror. And so Toad Hall was reclaimed. Mole, you're the best of fellows, declared Badger to Mole. So impressed was he with how valiantly Mole had fought. Toad felt rather hurt that the Badger hadn't complimented him on how splendidly he had fought. But Toad put aside his jealousy and thanked Mole for his help. Toad, said Badger, you must have a banquet to celebrate. Thinking immediately of all the speeches he would make, songs he would sing about his own leading part in the fight, Toad puffed up with conceit once more. He became so inflated that his friends suspected right away what Toad was up to. Now, Toad, said the rat, we want you to understand there are going to be no speeches and no songs, especially as all your songs are self-praise and and full of gas, put in the badger. Oh, it's for your own good, Toady, went on the rat. You know, you must turn over a new leaf sooner or later. Toad thought a long while. My friends, you shall never have occasion to blush to be embarrassed for me again, he said. But, oh dear, this is such a hard world. And so he was indeed a changed toad. As the weeks and months went by, 
Many tales were told of the great siege at Toad Hall. Toad became a more thoughtful toad, and life on the riverbank continued, as did the friendships of the creatures with whom you've just become acquainted. And that is the end of the Wind and Rivers.